Hi, Colonel Warren. Thanks for doing this. I was just wondering if you had an update on the total number of Islamic State fighters that are in Iraq and Syria right now. Uh, we'd heard on Friday from General Dunford an estimate of up to 35,000, which is which is higher than what we had heard last time. And I, I know that estimates are exactly that. They fluctuate. But have you seen an increase or a decrease in fighters? And to follow up on that question, what's being done by the United States and the coalition to hinder some of the recruitment? Because that would, the assumption to that, if, if the numbers haven't gone up or down, is that the recruitment still remains strong. Uh, would you agree with that and what's being done to stop that? I won't disagree with General Dunford, uh, but I, I will say that our estimate here is that there are between 20 and 25,000 uh, enemy fighters on the ground. Uh, and we believe that that's a reduction uh, from the number that we had been using for the previous year, uh, w which was up to 31,000. So we believe, uh, so our estimate has uh, reduced from a top end of 31 down to a top end of 25. So that's what we believe, uh, based on the information that we have. Uh, recruitment certainly is, uh, is one of the lines of effort, right? Is one of the things that we want to stop. We want to stop the flow of foreign fighters. Now there's two types of fighters uh, in ISIL, foreign fighters uh, and then local fighters. Uh, the local fighters, uh, we're seeing increasingly that they are conscripts. In other words, they're forced to fight against their will. Uh, there's another category of, of local fighters, which is fighters who maybe aren't committed uh, to the ISIL ideology and philosophy, but they need a job. And so they're fighting just for the money. And these two categories are the types of fighters that we see uh, increasingly deserting, uh, throwing down their weapons, uh, and, and running away. Uh, because they're not, you know, they're not you know, committed the way the foreign fighters are. Uh, the foreign fighters certainly are the most committed, right? They've gone to quite a bit of, of effort just to get to Syria. So they are both their most committed fighters and uh, they benefit, they receive, we believe, uh, superior training uh, from ISIL. Uh, and they're used often as either shock troops or a quick reaction force uh, or as specialty troops. So those are the different types of fighters. So to get to your question, how do we reduce recruiting? Well, locally, you know, that really is, is happening on its own, right? As people realize uh, that uh, ISIL does not really offer uh, what they claim to offer, uh, there's a much lower propensity for people to want to join them. You know, if, if you watch uh, ISIL propaganda or read their ridiculous magazine, uh, you would think that ISIL is a land of, of sunshine and rainbows where there's unicorns, you know, being ridden by leprechauns and everyone's happy. But then when you show up here, uh, you realize that it's closer to hell on earth, right? It's apocalyptic. Uh, Joe Tabit here. Uh, I want to go back to your opening statement, uh, sir. You mentioned, you mentioned that you are always uh, committed uh, to uh, target ISIL leaders, either in Iraq or in Syria or abroad. After taking many leaders in the last few months, my question is how close you think you are from targeting ISIL leader al-Baghdadi. And do you have any information if he is in Syria or in Iraq? Could you could share it with us? Uh, we know he's alive, we, or we, can, we believe he's alive. Uh, we also believe that he moves in between uh, Syria and Iraq. Even now, do you think he's t he, he has the capability to move right now from Syria to Iraq or vice versa? Yes. Thank you.